Hey guys, what's up? It's Simba here. Thank you so much for joining me on the Vision Board Podcast. Hi guys, welcome to the Vision Board Podcast. First of all, I love comedy. Um, we've had a comedian on our show before, but this time it's really special. The reason why I say that is because she is funny. Okay, she she was a part of she's a part of nothing called uh, nothing fancy. It's a uh, comedy bar in Toronto, um, and also she's a Hamilton native. Okay, and she is a comedian. She is a actor. She is a writer, and she is TikTok famous. We got <laughs> Hillary. Henderson in the building. Hi, Hillary. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for that introduction. You've clearly done your research on me. <laughs> of course, you know, we have to. Um, I would obviously like to ask, like, what is your story? Like, uh, like, how's your day been? What you've been up to? Yeah, day's been going good. Was just finishing up some work, filming some content. Um, like all other white girls in Toronto on a Friday night, I'm going to Toronto for dinner later. So <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's my exciting evening plans. But yeah, I mean, like in terms of my story of how I got into stand up, as you mentioned, I'm I'm from Hamilton, and um, when I was living there, and and as a kid, I. I did a lot of performance. I did a lot of uh, acting and theater. I always loved uh, being in any type of environment where I got to be creative, especially with my words, whether that was speech writing. I did a lot of speech competitions or mm. acting or anything like that, um, improv. And I was always kind of like a class clown. Like just recently okay. I was at Same. my parents' place and I went back and read some of my old report cards. And this was like, you know, with that part where they give you some actual feedback about your personality. And a lot of it was like, I was just laughing with my mom because it was like, Hillary is like so intelligent when she can like sit down and like stop talking to everybody. And I'd always like be around making everybody laugh. Like that was just always something that I really enjoy doing. And I think later in my life, I came to realize like, that's what I really feel like my purpose on earth is, is like entertaining people, especially using humor and like just bringing more like positivity and light to the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so after I finished high school, I kind of moved away from artistic endeavors. Like most people do, you think like I need to get a proper job, like I need to be successful. Uh, so I did a degree in international development and economics, and then I did another degree in public policy. And from there, I worked for some nonprofits. Amazing. I worked. Yeah, it was really interesting work. I worked for some nonprofits. I worked for government. Um, and I enjoyed that work. Like it was, I was working on issues related to immigration, economic development, education, uh, labor market stuff and and those things are really interesting to me but I was finding like I just really wasn't having the kind of impact that I wanted to have in the world doing just those things and I think a lot of part like a big part of, of growing up is coming back to the things we really love to do as a kid which as I explained was being creative especially with my words with writing with performance and making people laugh um so I started my TikTok at Hillary H Comedy you can find me there and then I've been doing stand-up in Toronto for uh, almost two years now. So it's been just a really fun journey. And now I'm living this really cool life where I'm doing still some of the policy work, but I'm also marrying that with a lot of the comedy stuff that really fuels me up. So yeah, it's lovely. Well said, well said. I mean, you mentioned you're a class clown. I mean, is that is that the moment that was like the light bulb moment that was like, aha, I should be doing comedy. Was it back, back in those times day? No, you know, I think it was like much later, like it was I was probably like early 20s when I was like, oh, I want to do stand up. Oh, okay. um, I think I've always enjoyed using humor to tell stories, but I didn't really think like stand up was the medium of art that I wanted to use to talk about some of the things I wanted to talk about. So it was actually um, right before the pandemic hit in 2020. I think it was like late 2019. I had just finished um, my first degree and I uh, I got a concussion. I was in a, a car accident. It wasn't like anything super serious, but I was concussed Ooh, from it. And as that. I'm sure you know, when you're concussed, you can't uh, you you can't watch TV. You can't really do anything sort of mentally stimulating. Right. Uh, I was listening to audiobooks, podcasts, that kind of thing. And I was living with a boyfriend at the time who was watching TV, and I was getting like annoyed. Where I was like, well, I want to watch TV too, but I can't. Uh, so then what we started doing is we like watched pretty much like every comedy special that was on Netflix at the time, because that was something where unless uh, a performer is doing something like really physical comedy, you can pretty much absorb what they're doing and the what they're conveying without looking at the at the actual performer. Uh, so it was like there when I saw it, I think I just had this 
probably false sense of confidence where I was just like, I could do that. <laughs> like, I, could, I could probably do that. Um, and I like, I ended up taking a, a class with the second city and stand up before I, uh, ended up performing myself, which was like a really great way. Like totally recommend that if people are interested in, uh, in kind of dipping their toes in stand up. And I think for me, like stand up is something I really love and I hope that I always can do, but it's just a really great way to practice, uh, public speaking skills, obviously to practice mm -hmm. your humor, to kind of keep your, uh, finger on the pulse of what people are talking about and what they're finding funny. And I've made such an incredible friends um, in Toronto doing that. Of course, we know that because um, I see your TikTok and you made a video with Chloe Brown. Like we had Chloe Brown on the show. You asked her a very interesting question. Would you rather wait on the highway uh, <laughs> or uh, use the bicycle up, up on Young Street? And that was the funniest video I've seen um so far but obviously that those questions are you know kind of sensitive and, you know totally yeah well I'm glad you enjoyed it it's, it's, it was interesting because we really kind of went back and forth we did that was a clip from a TikTok live I did with her and the, the whole live was about an hour and so we yeah, went yeah. back and forth from talking about like okay what are you going to do in terms of police services for the city and then was like these these silly questions where we did like a Mary fuck kill and like a would you rather with yeah. these kind of outrageous scenarios. So, and and that's the thing too, I've, I've been making a series as well as you've probably seen on my TikTok related to the candidates for mayor. Um, yeah. Political activism is something I'm really passionate about and getting people more involved in voting and, and civic participation in yes. general. So I think it's really interesting to be able to use like my storytelling and writing skills to be able to talk about some of the issues that I'm passionate about the city. And also just to like, it is, I'm entertaining. <laughs> that's the, the, the media. Are. Um, Cause, cause but of a lot course, of pages, I, I want to educate people too. I know. I see a lot of pages. It's all about like bashing other candidates and it's not really entertaining. It's a lot of writing, not, not a lot of visuals going on. So what you're doing is really interesting and engaging, which is important. Um, I do want to ask you your biggest aha moment in your career so far. You kind of touched on, touched on it a little bit, but I want to know like specifically, what is the, that biggest aha moment in your career? Mm. It's, I, you know, I don't think I've had any sort of like really big aha moments for me. It's been like kind of slow, slower progress. Um, I would say back at the end of uh, 2020, I was um, a Narcity Media, a media company here wow. uh, in Canada, reached out to me and oh, wanted yeah. to reshare some of my videos and work with me. And I think that was kind of the moment when I start, started to get confidence in myself where I was like, oh, okay, like this isn't just like my friends watching anymore. Like there are other people going to be watching this. Uh, and so that was kind of the moment where I really, I think for me, I felt more confident in my abilities to like make this more of a career and not just as a hobby, um, which, you know, we can talk about the dangers of that sometimes, like making your hobby now a career and now you need to find other hobbies and outlets. Um, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I really think it's it's so, I just, I, I write a blog as well. And I wrote a blog post about this this week that like, you really need to find like your sacred work, like your sacred call, like what you feel like you that inner voice is like telling you to do like you must do that like you can't ignore that and if you do like you're you're bound to be upset or depressed or anxious in some way um and so like this like like using comedy for me is like a medium to share either like stuff related to politics or I have another series about being single and childless and just like silly things like that like trying to the objective I have is to try and like build more community around some of these things that I'm interested so in love that Hillary so I want to get a little personal here um me personally I'm in a very tight situation ship uh I want to ask you how did how does like and obviously you're you're a female in this industry so it's like male dominated who knows who cares yeah but like um I'm not like I I feel like like as a single person I feel a big 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 um struggle balancing a relationship a career and all of that breakup I mean how did you do it like how are you doing it like totally what, like, I mean you go through <laughs> tough times how do you overcome it yeah I I would say I'm not really doing it um <laughs> I would say for me currently my career is really my priority and my focus right now um I'm doing I've got some stuff kind of in the works that I can't really share uh yet exactly what that is but I basically have like three jobs at this point and so uh -huh. like the past two weeks solid I've been working every day from pretty much like 8 a.m to like 10 p.m um whether yeah. that's like my policy work or um my content or stand up or writing or some of the other things that I'm researching and working on um and so really like 
I don't know if it's maybe it's like an avoidance thing. <laughs> but I feel like <laughs> my schedule like really doesn't allow for a lot of dating currently, um, which is like, you know, a little bit sad, but I feel like I'm really motivated and like really building up this part of my life that is so satisfying for me that I don't really feel like I'm missing out all that much. But I don't know, maybe ask me in a few more months. But Not I think you. that's always the challenge, right? Because like time is our most precious resource. Like we have a finite amount of time, right? And so like you want to be spending that with people you really value, whether that's friends or, or or work relationships or romantic relationships, right? And so I think when I first moved to Toronto and was like first doing stand up, I had like a lot more free time and I was going on like five Tinder dates a weekend kind of thing. And that was fun. Like it was a good experience. I got to meet some cool people. I got to meet some not so, so cool people too. Uh, but I found for me, like, it really wasn't filling me up in the way that I wanted it to. So now I'm kind of transitioning more into a phase where I'm like quality over quantity, you know, and I think we, yeah, like, I think it, it's hard too Love because it. like, I don't know the, the person you're in a situation ship right now. Can I ask how you met this person? Was it on a dating app? Oh, uh, no, it was in person. It was in person. Okay. How did that play out? Um, long story short, um, she is the mother of my children so okay. um it's 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 a bit complicated um but i will say um it's a lot of um i'm getting busier and busier and i i don't i don't you know i i want to be fair to you i don't want to like tell you i'm going to do something and i can't so it's a in that way it's 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 kind of like the person wants my time and i can't get that time yeah yeah so, that's yeah. challenging yeah challenging yeah yeah, which I feel like in, in those kind of cases, it's like you either need to decide like, okay, is this person worth more of my time and, and I can like allocate that to them? Or is it like, maybe, maybe this isn't a match or maybe this isn't a match right now. Or maybe you have a conversation about like, this is what I'm able to give you for this X period of time. Does that work for you? And then readjust in a few more months when maybe things are less busy. But I don't know. I don't really subscribe to the idea of like right person, wrong time. Like, mm -hmm. I think I've definitely had people in my past that I dated where like at the time I was just like so enamored with them. And like one person who like really broke my heart was going through a really stressful time and like career changes in their life. And so I think for a long time I had like understanding for that, which I think you absolutely should. But for me, I think I think too, like life is never not stressful or busy. Like exactly. it's always going to be like that. Right. Exactly. And so I think it's about like finding out what is the balance of that for you and for the people in your life and your like romantic partners. And I think I will say like, I I'm heterosexual. So like, I'm most familiar with like that dynamic, like between men and women. And when I see that playing out, I often see women a lot more giving up a lot more themselves than men are in the relationship in terms of their free time, their, their love. And I think that's like really admirable, but I think I'm also just like very wary of like being in any sort of dynamic that is at all like codependent where you're giving up so much of yourself into another person where it's maybe bordering on like not healthy, or you maybe can't have space from that person. Or when you feel when you're away from that person without with your girlfriends for a night, you feel anxious. Like those things are just like really not healthy. And I think like, I've totally been there. I say this from experience. And for me, it was like a lot of therapy that I'm still doing um, therapy, related to okay. just like building up more like self-confidence and self-esteem. And, and I think my um, uh, first boyfriend who I lived with for a period of time, like when that relationship ended, I was like mm. crushed. Right. Because I, and then you're thinking through all those things of like, no one else is ever going to love me. And you start like telling yourself mm -hmm. all those really like negative untrue stories. And so like, I don't want to be like cliche and be like, you just got to love yourself first. But like, if you don't, if you don't like spending time with you, who is like, you have to really be okay with your peace, you know? So much gem. Yeah. I'm just yeah. taking notes here. <laughs> I'm just taking notes. That's yeah. all I can do. But I, I'm agree. impressed you met somebody in person. That's like really rare these days, you know? Oh yeah, I know. But it it it, it could it could happen. Just just go out. Just have a reason to go out. Like go 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 shopping. Go go for a walk. You know, just have a reason to leave your house. But totally. yeah. final question I want to ask you is any advice you would give to someone who is trying to get into this um art form in this in this culture called art? I think like I'm actually just started reading a really great book by um, the author of Eat, Pray, Love, Elizabeth Gilbert. It's called Big Magic. And it's a book, I think the like subtitle for it is like living creative, creatively without fear. 
And I think mm -hmm. that's a huge part of it. Like, I think you have to ask yourself, like, if you have a goal, whether it's doing something creative, which like, I hope it is, the world needs more creatives. Um, but if you have a goal for, for anything in your life, like ask yourself, like, what's stopping you from doing that? Like, you're afraid it's, I think it usually comes down to a fear of like, we feel like we're not good enough. We feel like whatever we're going to make or do is stupid. We're going to be afraid of how our family, how our partner, how our friends or society reacts to something we're doing. And I think like, you just really need to try and quiet those things out and really mm -hmm. listen to like that internal voice to be like, well, why is it that I want to create something? Like, why is it that I want to make different changes in my life and like use that as your compass? Um, and I think like starting out, like the more like tangible steps would be like maybe take a, taking a course in something you're interested in or awesome. trying to reach out and network with other people who are already doing it. Because sometimes I find I have a goal for myself where I'm like, oh, I really want to do that. That looks sick. And then I do it. I'm like, I actually don't really think I like that anymore. And, and then you can pivot. And that's totally fine, too. And like having kind of that compassion for yourself as well to be like, all right, well, we tried that out. Didn't love that. Like on to the next thing, you know, like it's I think life is like too short to not do what you love. I love that because I I did hear someone say like a career change should happen like every five years. So mm. you shouldn't be, yeah, you went to school for medicine. You shouldn't be in medicine for the rest of your life, man. But um, that's, that's all I wanted to mention. And thank you for getting it done. Uh, Hillary, is there a beautiful soundtrack that's on repeat or a song that represent how you feel right now? Ooh, can't think of one off the top. I I'm not gonna lie. I listen to a lot of trash. Like I like Taylor Swift. We love her. I love like country bubblegum pop. Kelsey Ooh, Ballerini. Like that. those are my girls. <laughs> we love that. I mean, I can surprise you if you want. Um, yeah. But... Okay, Hillary. Thank you for getting it done. We will keep in touch. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for getting you it done. Too. Thank you so much podcast. for having me. No problem. Take care. See you. Bye. Bye.